Let's get some thoughts and views from legendary investor Jim Rogers, chairman of Rogers Holdings, for his thoughts on all of this. He is also the author of the book, A Gift to My Children, and Jim will be with us for the next 30 minutes. We're absolutely delighted to have you here. Um, earlier, uh, you said that bankruptcy for Greece is the best possible scenario right now in the market action. A lot of investors seem to be signing some sort of relief that maybe there is a, a bailout for Greece, and this is good news. But is this bailout, we don't really seem to have the key bull, bullet, bullet point uh, numbers as to what they precisely intend to do. Well, but is this politi- short term? That's it- politicians. They never tell you exactly what's going to happen. A, because they don't know, and B, they fudge it as they go along. But this is not good for Greece. Now, I own the euro, as you may know, because. You're long, but why are you long, long the euro? Because there's so many shorts. And because, I mean, gigantic pessimists around the world about, about the euro. And so I always try to be on the other side of the trade, if it makes sense. And I figured something would, be, would come up to paper this crisis over. Now, I don't think that's good. I don't think it's good for Europe or the euro, but I expected it to happen. I'm sure it will. The euro will have a rally, and then we'll have to see. But this is weakening the euro from within. But Jim, it's here in London. Good to see you. Good Good to see you, Jim. But are we being a little too negative, perhaps, on uh, what we've heard out of Brussels? I mean, we now know that there will be a backstop, a last resort backstop, uh, from provided by Eurozone members and a third provided, we believe, by the IMF. There will be an interest rate payable. It won't be a a gift. It will be a loan. There will be strong conditions attached. One expects those to be surrounding uh, bringing down their own budget deficit. Uh, So how much more detail do markets need? And it's always, quote, a loan. But Europe, I mean, Greece still has a huge deficit. They say they're attacking their deficit, and I'm sure they are, but their deficit is to over 12% of their GDP. The Greeks have never lived within their means, and I suspect they won't this time either until they're forced to by either bankruptcy or somebody just refusing to give them loans. Papering this over, Anna, is not good. You push the problem out into the future, and then when the next country comes, it's the same thing. And then the next country, it's the same thing. You're weakening the euro from within, and rather saying, instead of saying we're going to have a sound, strong currency, you're just continually chipping away at the euro until the euro eventually will disappear. Could you not argue that they're strengthening the euro from within, Jim? I mean, this is a very young currency union. It, uh, there, were, there were glaring emissions in its creation, and, and many people would uh, accept that now. Uh, but now we're trying to fill in those gaps and trying to put in those institutions that perhaps should have been there, there in the first place. Oh, no, Anna, there were not glaring emissions in the beginning. They all said in the Maastricht Treaty, we're going to maintain sound currencies, we're going to maintain sound budgets. And since then, the execution, everybody has ignored the Maastricht Treaty. Everybody has ignored the contract. They've all used phony bookkeeping. Greece is 12% of, of a 12% deficit. France, Italy, Portugal, they all been phoning their books. It was not the contract that was wrong. It's been the execution since. This is not going to solve the problem. Well, this is Greece going to make is- it worse. I know that Greece has admitted, I know that Greece has admitted, Jim, what you call phony bookkeeping, and they've held their hands up and said, yes, we did fiddle the figures, and they're, they're trying to put that right. I don't, uh, I don't know if other countries would go along with you and say that there's been, uh, that there's been uh, tampering with the statistics, if you like. I mean, now, uh, perhaps we're entering a new era, and Angela Merkel wants to uh, make sure that there are implications if you breach Maastricht Treaty rules, and perhaps this solution we've got is some kind of uh, best, best uh, of a bad job, if you like, because uh, we have uh, a number of countries with big budget deficits. But here, they're at least trying to put in some implications. Um, yes, you'll get help, but it'll cost you. Well, yes, but that's what the original treaty said, too. Mm-hmm. They were, nobody's going to have a, a deficit of over 3% of, of gross national product. Well, you see what's happened ever since. Nobody, I, very few people, very few countries in Europe have maintained that that guideline. And you, I can name them once as well as you can. Most of them have gone over that, and several of them use phony bookkeeping. I'm a little startled to hear you say that they, they don't use phony bookkeeping. A few years ago, the French came up with some phony bookkeeping that was so absurd that even the Italians were stunned. And the Italians have been using phony bookkeeping for centuries. As soon as the Italians figured out what had happened and pulled themselves off the floor, they too mm-hmm. came up with more phony bookkeeping. I mean, this is rampant in Europe. But help us explain why you are long the euro at this moment. Everybody is short. You're going against the wave, I understand. But um, the involvement of the IMF, what is that going to mean for the euro? I remember when South Korea went to the IMF, the currency moved from 800 
to nearly 2,000 within a matter of days. Well, the reason I'm along is because I expect them to paper this over. The shorts are all expecting the euro to disintegrate and things to fall apart. I don't think they're going to disintegrate and fall apart. Not this time, anyway. Someday, yes. So, therefore, if the euro doesn't disintegrate and fall apart, it will have a rally, says wow. I. I hope. We'll see. All right. We shall see.